What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Bruce Sports Report. Without you guys and you ladies, you know that this is not working. But one thing you cannot say about me is I don't work. I work hard every single day at everything I do. I am constantly trying to reinvent myself and get better. Because here's the thing, you know, there's many a company, many an individual that was on top that took that shit for granted. And they figured, hey, I'm good. I'm fantastic. Everybody loves me. I ain't got to do that work anymore. I can kick back, I can relax, and I got it made. And what I'll tell you is, give it a little bit of time. Because they're headed for irrelevance. That's right. Because if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. You cannot just kick back and say, we were good last year. We're going to be the same if we just don't change nothing. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that's why Tampa Bay is going for a fall. That's right. You heard me say it right here, right now. The Tampa Bay, you know, they went through and they said, we're going to re-sign everybody. We got Tom Brady. We don't need to change nothing. It ain't broke. We won the Super Bowl. And I'm going to tell you, that's going to be the downfall for Tampa Bay. Bill Belichick, whether you think he's a cheater or not, Bill Belichick has this thing that even when they win, about 30% of that roster is going bye-bye. That's it. 30% of them is going to go bye-bye. Why? So that way nobody is comfortable. Nobody is. That means everybody realizes, I don't want to be one of those guys that are gone. I got to work hard. And make sure that my shit is together or else I will be one of those ones gone. You understand what I'm saying? You follow me? Bill Belichick understands that change is good for the organization. It, it keeps people outside of the organization guessing as to what they're going to do. That's key. And the Dallas Cowboys, and you can look at it and say, the shit they were doing last year wasn't working. Although, I will say mostly because of injuries. Let's face it. The Cowboys and the 49ers had more injuries on their team than anybody else in the NFL. Anybody. And I know the, the Cowboy haters are going to come through. Here he goes. He just making excuses for his team. They're valuable. They're viable excuses. See, I can say that having Ben DiNucci, Double G, and Andy Dalton as my starting quarterbacks is a reason why our offense didn't do as good as it could with Dak Prescott. You can't say that for the New York Giants because you had Danny Dimes all season long. All season long. He only missed three games and only had 11 touchdown passes in 13 games and 10 interceptions. Oh, by the way, Daniel Jones, check this out. Daniel Jones has 29 fumbles in his career. He is the first and only quarterback to have more fumbles than games played in. He's averaging more than one fumble a game. Take that. So, the question you have to ask is, knowing that we were asked last year, is the gamble that the Cowboys are taking on the offensive line. The Cowboys are gambling that former rookie Tyler Badish is going to be a good center. Because you look at it, they let Joe Looney go. Joe Looney's not there as a backup. I know Connor McGovern uh, the governor can play some center. You know, I, I get that. But in essence, they're putting all the eggs 
in the Tyler Baddish category. There is nobody else to back him up on that, really. Nobody with experience, et cetera, really. And then you have to say Tyron Smith. They're putting their eggs in the baskets with Tyron Smith right there on it and banking on his health. Although they did bring in Ty Nasecki, but I think Ty Nasecki, it's conceivable, might get cut in training camp. But he is a swing tackle. And they got Brandon McKnight and they've got Terrence Steele. At least they got some experience last year. They're also banking on Lyle Collins coming back from his issues with his hips. Now, he does look good, but let's make no mistake about it. The Cowboys season is all going to come down to one thing, and that is the health of the offensive line. If they stay healthy, the sky's the limits for this offense. That 5,000 yards um, forecasting in fantasy football for Dak Prescott is more than achievable with the receivers that he has. Zeke Elliott getting back on track with those receivers and the fact that Dak Prescott will probably be throwing a whole lot of football. It's conceivable for Zeke Elliott if he has that offensive line back to where it was to get 13, 1400 yards. It's not a reach because teams cannot cover everything. The Dallas Cowboys have the offensive weapons, but the fly in the ointment is there's a lot of freaking question marks on that offensive line that it could go either way. We could be a top five offensive line or we could be a bottom 25. And it's all a big gamble as to which way that's going to go. I can't tell you. I don't think anybody can tell you. I think the Cowboys looked and said, we can't afford to try and fix the defense and the offensive line at the same time. In football, understand this. Football, everything about it is a gamble. Every play is a gamble. The Cowboys looked and they said, if we don't fix the defense, we don't get better on defense, then we got no chance. We got a chance that the offensive line can fix itself just with some health. And we figure, or they figure, they're better off gambling on that than gambling that the offense could be good enough to make up for the defense. I think it's about the only recourse that they really had. You can't fix everything in one off season. You just can't. You've got to go ahead and pick your poison of which one is more important. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish stacking up these walls, hoping to see my buddy Jet D this evening. And um, I'm pretty proud of us. You know, we didn't get here till late, but we've taken care of some business. Uh, I've got, look, boom. Pulled out two windows here. Put in two. But one of them was broken. The, the tenants broke the window. So I just went ahead and replaced the two of those. I've got my uh, insulation, foam, insulation foam in there. I'm going to let that dry tonight, clear that off in the morning, then put the mold back on there and get ready to start painting some of this stuff. So, that being said, Mike's back with the uh, chainsaw bar oil. Yeah, the lubricant. For the chainsaw, right? Bar right. chainsaw. That's what we're talking about. We're going to cut some of the tree out front here yeah, yeah. and some of the shrubs so we can see better and all that. I'm Mark Holmes with... The best sun. Look at that. You see that right there? I don't know if you ever know, if you knew this or not. I don't know that is the best sun like in the whole wide, the whole world. The best sun. And, and, and you know what? I kick a motherfucker's ass that says he isn't. I kick a motherfucker. That, that, that right there. He the best sun in the world. What? Why are you looking at me like I'm crazy? No, I, I'm not the crap out of that boy. Oh, I'm sorry. He's the best sun in the world. I won't knock the crap I'm out of him. But you're the best sun in the world. All the suns in the world, you only have except for the one up in the sky. That the sun up in the sky is better than he is. I, I, I gotta say, yeah, you know he is warming up the whole planet. He, you know he can't the, do that. You know the sun's actually white. 
What happened? Okay, all right. Uh, we're, we're not getting, listen, we're not getting into racial politics no, 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 here, no, no. okay? No, all right. no, no, I'm not saying that, but because of the, the reflection of the lights, you don't only see the yellow. I'm going to go back to work. Fun fact, fun fact. Peace. Bro.